So as gas prices spiral out of control, Western countries are reverting to coal for energy. But there is a third option that we should discuss, which is nuclear. Of course, nuclear has a bad rap because of nuclear incidents, such as Three Mile Island or Fukushima. But when you look at death per unit of electricity, nuclear is actually at the bottom by leaps and bounds. Check out this chart. Nuclear, I'm sorry, my screenshots are usually a bit often Clayton gives me a bad time about them, but nuclear is the in. one at the bottom. It's so small you can't even see it. It's like, it's almost like it's nuclear. Yes, it's it's been <laughs> nuclearized. It's like, it's like microscopic. It's so small you can't even see it on that chart. Sure. Okay, but Western leaders are currently telling us we need to return to coal because we can't buy fuel from Russia. We're in a gas crunch, so we got to go back to coal, right? Mm -hmm. But as we return to coal, your energy will literally be killing humans at a rate of 100,000 deaths per terawatt hour. This is not just because coal mining is dangerous, which it is. It's also because coal is linked to asthma, cancer, heart disease. Is this progress in the year 2022? I got the black lung. That paw. we need to go back to coal? Right. So let's talk about what we talk, what we mean when we talk about nuclear, because I think that it's just sort of overlooked. Um, and I want to caution that this is something that I've only just began to study. And I want to thank those of you who sent me instructional videos about fossil fuels. Uh, that is really interesting. And I want to talk about that another day. Uh, but when I study nuclear, I just have this sneaky suspicion that we are not being told the truth, especially with headlines like this. Uh, take a look at this. Nuclear is the future. Tiger and Bill Gates know it. Tiger Woods? That's um, what I was going to ask. No, it's, it, oh, that, okay. that's a um, Okay, I was like, oh, it's Tiger. A Tiger's yeah, I know. In, a rare, I, I, in a rare partnership. <laughs> right. But Tiger like, Woods and Bill Gates team up for nuclear energy. <laughs> right. But again, you know, anytime you say Bill Gates, I'm like, ooh, there's my funny bone, right? My right. Uh, That's triggering my funny bone there. Uh, my conspiracy funny, funny bone, because that guy seems to really have an in on like what is going to. Well, yeah, like, well, what, all of a sudden, like he now owns all the farmland in the United States. Like what's going on as we're consolidating power, you know, as the World Economic Forum is like tr trying to take away all of your personal assets. They don't want you to own anything. They want to consolidate power. And Bill Gates is buying up all the farmland in the United States. Hmm. Does that tickle your pickle? Um, yeah, it just sort of like <laughs> it puts my spidey um, sense, my spidey Senses. arm hairs up. Right. <laughs> That's not the way. <laughs> your spidey arm hairs. It's not exactly how Stanley. <laughs> not exactly, spidey goosebumps. It's not exactly how Stanley wrote it, but all right, go ahead. You get it. Your spidey sense. Okay. Okay. Well, that's so from the original draft, Clayton. That's the original draft. The spidey. The, you've only read the edited one. Natalie has access to the original draft, where it was you spidey arm it. hair sense. The spidey boner. <laughs> the spidey boner. All right, so nuclear power, it comes from the splitting of atoms into smaller nuclei, nuclei, which releases energy in the form of heat and radiation. The heat is what can be converted into electricity in a nuclear power plant, and the radiation is what's dangerous and must be disposed of properly. But nuclear plants need uranium that is enriched, and this uranium can be recycled or disposed of. Nuclear is considered a low carbon source of energy because it doesn't produce CO2. It is clearly not perfect, but it is not akin to returning to coal, clearly. So do politicians know this? You may ask yourself, well, uh, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, when they were on the campaign trail in 2019, both promised to shut down nuclear plants during their campaign. And in fact, Elizabeth of Warren uh, called for nuclear to be phased out completely by 2035. But the Biden administration supports it. Ooh, what's that? Oh, we're just playing with, we're playing with different sound effects. Okay. Uh, the Biden administration supports actually building more nuclear po power plants. And in April... Uh, published a notice of intent to spend $6 billion on this project. And last week, the Department of Energy awarded $60 billion for 74 new nuclear plants. And, of course, there's Bill Gates. He invests in a company called Terra Power that builds small reactors because... Ter terror? Terra. Oh, Terra Power. Okay. Uh, yeah, it seems like that guy always knows on where the wind will blow and how to capitalize on that, right? 
But guess who is also highly invested in nuclear? Any guesses? Uh, Germany? Oh, no, Germany. That's right. I forgot. Germany just closed all of their nuclear power plants. Yes. And France, conveniently, this week, had an outage, a te technical outage. Uh, but you know who's doing just fine? Hmm. Russia. Oh, that's shocking. Yes. <laughs> Would it surprise you to know that Russia is way ahead of the rest of the world in nuclear and, in fact, bringing plants reactor plants all over the world. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Oh, I've, got no a, wonder. I, I've got a, a timeshare in uh, Chernobyl, which is... Uh, I was going to say, no fasting. wonder they took over Chernobyl again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, those well, jokes are in, silly. that's in Ukraine. But um, yeah. Oh, but yeah. But, but so I think they've figured it out since then. Okay, it but like the point remains that humans are afraid of nuclear because it's got a bad rap, mm -hmm. right? Uh, no one wants it in their backyard. Uh, but what we don't know is that the technology to actually protect power plants and prevent cores from melting has come a long way. Well, I mean, Elon Musk just a few months ago was, I mean, people, the left sort of vilified him for this. And he's like, look, the, you know, nuclear is the safest form of tech, uh, energy, right? And one of the f safest forms of energy. And they're like, what, what? He's like, yeah, it's come so far that just look into it and understand like how protective it is against any sort of yeah. meltdown, leak, redundancies, all of that. Which right. is actually true. Uh, it is expensive to build new plants and, you know, you have to retire them and move to different reactors. Um, but that is something that could be done. And clearly the Biden administration wants to do, but does not want to tell you as an alternative to these other fuel sources. Right. So we've been told like, oh, we could just add some ethanol to gas and that will solve some of our problems. Although ethanol also has gas in it. When it's made, ethanol has to have gas added to it or else it will be taxed as an alcohol, which I think most people don't know. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're being told these sort of half measures instead of these things that it seems like clearly politicians don't know, do know, but they don't want to talk about, right? Also, nuclear, it supports our lifestyle of consumption. It doesn't ask you to plug fewer things in, which doesn't seem to be something that's like really making way. No, nobody's like, oh, I guess I'll just buy fewer electrified things, right? Uh, you can't turn it off at night, so it can charge your car overnight. You don't have to rely on the wind or the sun. Um, it clearly is not a perfect solution. Uranium has a scarcity problem. By some estimates, we could deplete it within the next 70 to 80 years. Uh, but guess where uranium is mined in the world right now? Another guess. Uh, Russia. Russia. Oh. Okay. At least 35% of the uranium used in Europe, uh, in European reactors, also come from Russia. And later this year, the European Commission is set to decide on whether or not it will classify nuclear as a clean energy source. So um, I give up. Here, I, I don't know what to think of all of this. Well, Elon Musk, here, here's, uh, if you take my screen here, uh, Philip, so this is Elon shutting down nuclear power plants is total madness. Talking about the Ukrainian conflict and Germany's mistakes, Western Europe's dependence on Russian energy supplies. Musk said it's very important that Germany will not shut down its nuclear power stations. I think this is extremely crazy. And uh, one of the questioners says, is, is nuclear energy the key to free ourselves from dictators and autocrats? Like Putin, Musk answered, I want to be super clear. You should not only not shut down nuclear power plants, but you should also reopen the ones that you've already shut down. Those are the fastest way to produce energy. It's crazy to shut down nuclear power plants now, especially if you're in a place where there are no natural disasters, i.e. no earthquakes, no tsunamis, like Germany, right? So, Well, but fewer places on Earth can be classified as that due to... Climate change. Yeah, but, but Germany's okay. not one of them. I mean, they had some flooding, yes, but certainly not prone to tsunamis, right? In, right, in and Germany. again, there is uh, there is new technology to protect reactors. Do, yes. For, yeah, but isn't, uh, isn't Germany one of the places that are sanctioning Russia as well? Because do, do people yes. realize, I think it's 70% of their coal they get from Russia? Yes, in yes. a major, major way. Germany's like leading the, leading the, the move on this. And so going back to coal, so you have an opportunity, like all those nuclear power plants you just turned off, can you go fire them back up again? I don't know what it's, I don't know what like a circuit breaker looks like on one of those things. Uh, 
I, what I'm interested in, okay, zero carbon emissions, right, from a nuclear right. plant. But what is the carbon footprint? What is the carbon emissions for mining uranium? Clearly there is some, right? So it's not a zero well, yes. sum game. Right. Um, and how sustainable is uranium and is enriching, enriching uranium also something that produces carbon? Um, you know, there's still sort of lasting questions around it, but it does seem that in the short term, uh, the West could turn to this as a solution, but will not. And my theory is because still it politics because of the politics. Well, I mean, I look, I follow these uranium producers. I follow precious metals producers very closely, uh, companies that I look in and I invest in and see what they're doing and the demand for them I mean, is off the charts. So even with some of these Western countries closing down and clamping down on nuclear power, others are ramping up on it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, you know, again, you saw what the United States is looking at doing. Um, Germany might be moving the opposite direction. But still, the demand for uranium, the demand for it is uh, off the charts. Um, yeah. And uh, very few, and by the way, like the United States, here's one, you know, the secrets, right? The United States is so reliant on China and Russia to get uranium if we want to do this work in the United States. So yes. what do you do? You turn to, you try to find some other alternative sources of this in Canada where there's, you know, there's uranium producers. And so, again... It's, it's this like roundabout thing. It's like where they're relying on China and Russia for certain things, but we're going to sanction you for other things. Like we'll take yeah. what we need from you, but we'll, we'll sanction you for those other things. And my concern is about trying to rely on solar, right, which are made of silicon, which is carbon heavy to manufacture, mm -hmm. right, um, and moving towards electricity rather than gas also demands water, when you make electricity that, you know, it comes from water. Um, Kevin, one of our producers, says that his dad spent 50 years working for a public utility company and insists nuclear is the only way to keep up with the demand right now because renewable energy will just never keep up. And the U.S. grid is a disaster um, more than we'll ne ever know because he says national security prevents us to, from really knowing. Uh, and... This was a, a learning experience for me to learn and to, to look into exactly what this would entail and why the government is not listing it amongst its sort of crazy like, well, hey, you know, we'll just build solar farms and that will be all fine and we'll lift sanctions from China and, you know, we'll get them from That's China. That's what we need to do. I think I just found our Flugelbinder, you know, if, if you watch the movie Cocktail, our Flugel, Flugelbinder, our million dollar idea and we could sell them on Amazon, our personal nuclear plants for our houses that we put on top, and boom, we got all the energy we Oh, that sounds safe. House. Yeah, that's yeah. no problem. Yeah. I'll have my kids install it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll just, take the radiation find a, out with find the compost. To, yeah. Just got to find a way to pump all of that high-pressure water in there, though. So, you know, like, I, there, yeah. there's, a, there's a limit to how scalable nuclear power can be because of that, because it's not just uranium sitting in a box that's powering it. It's yes. actually boiling... Uh, steam turbines and yes. so so it's like mm. but the the in the in the new generation of nuclear uh because you have like the first generation which was where all of the problems happened all your chernobyl yes. your three mile island then you have like the second generation which is like nuclear subs and stuff like that and then your third generation being like the the newest one which is based more off of the sub technology is actually like really quite safe but yeah there's still always like natalie pointed out the problems of actually getting uranium because it only comes from certain places, you know, and, and actually like the problems involved in having the uranium, enriching the uranium and all that stuff. So, yeah, you know, that's, that's my <laughs> and, point. And my, it's my water intensive, it. right? Yeah. And uh, we have an interview coming yes, up very. here soon um, with a professor who studies water rights in the United States. And, you know, water is becoming increasingly precious um, in, in all societies. Well, as Kamala Harris told us, right, this could be the resource that we start new wars over. Yes. That world wars would start over water. That yeah, there's Kamala a bunch Harris. of people who bought a bunch of bought a bunch of property in Par Paraguay because there's like aqueducts or not aqueducts, but like uh, big aquifers. water aquifers. Uh, aquifers. The fountain of youth uh, under there. Oh. Yeah, but the Bush family even bought some. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. You know, we've been banned, we've been blocked, we've been censored. That's why we started our own website to stay connected with you for free.
That's right. So head on over to redacted.inc and make sure you're connected with us. You can sign up again at redacted.inc, not .com.